Hi guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started today. I'm so excited to be with you for another virtual kids church. It's so exciting to just be able to hang out and to speak to you and know that you're there on the other side listening. So we're gonna pray and we're gonna get started today. All right, let's do that. Lord Jesus, we're just so excited to be able to be in kids church today. Father, I just pray for each and every family that's sitting in front of their TV right now. God, that you would just minister to their families, that you would minister to each and every individual. And I just ask this in your name today, Lord. Amen.
Frankie the Forecaster here. As you can see, we have a very large front moving in behind me. How was a front moving in behind me? My last forecast was 40 days of rain. I almost lost my job over that one. Now, as we can see, we have clouds by day and I see fire coming at night. Yes, I said fire at night. Until next time, this is Frankie the Forecaster saying, you can weather anything with God. Goodbye. Hi guys, ready to learn your memory verse today? All right. It's in Psalms 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. All right, so everybody stand up and get yourself some wiggle room like we always do. And we're going to do this in a mosquito voice. Everybody loves mosquitoes, right? No, we don't like mosquitoes. But we're going to do it in our mosquito voice. So everybody grab your fingers like this and pinch your nose like this. It's going to make you talk kind of funny, but we're going to do it in our mosquito voice. Are you ready? Here we go. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So it's 119, 105. That was pretty good. I think some of you probably aren't participating, so help me out. Everybody try it. I know. I know. Let's do it in a quiet voice. Let's whisper it, okay? Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119, 105. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I don't know. Um, I think one of our other favorites is robot. So everybody get your robot together. Here we go. Are you ready? Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119, 5, 105. I'm almost trying to say it backwards there. All right. So maybe if we spin in a circle, everybody spin in a circle. Are you ready? Here we go. Your word is a lamp that, to guide my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119, 105. Whoa. Oh, man, that one made me dizzy. All right. Let's just say it together as loud as you can. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119, 105. Awesome, guys. Good job. You guys can sit down, and then we're going to get back into some more of our stuff. Hi, guys. We're just going to get in that place where we can worship with the Lord today. So just want you to close your eyes and focus on Jesus and his amazing goodness to us. And let's just worship Jesus together. Here we go. Sing, sing, I love you, I love you, as I close my eyes to sleep at night, I will worship, worship you, I love you, Jesus. 
Hi guys, we're gonna get into our lesson today, so I want you to get comfortable, put your listening ears on, and we're gonna get all set and we're gonna hear this story today from the Bible, all right? Awesome. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray today that we would have open ears and open hearts to hear what the Holy Spirit has for us today. And God, that you would just reveal yourself to us today, Lord. We ask this in your name, Jesus, and we say amen. A long time ago in Bible times, the Hebrew people lived as slaves in the land of Egypt. The Egyptian people were mean. They mistreated the Hebrew slaves, and the Hebrews cried out to God. God raised up a great Hebrew leader named Moses. Because Pharaoh would not listen, God brought trouble on Egypt until Pharaoh ordered the Hebrews to leave Egypt immediately. And we all know about that. That's when God sent the plagues of the frogs and the blood and the water and all that stuff. And Pharaoh had had enough. He couldn't do it anymore. And so he just said, leave. I don't want you here anymore. Moses had warned the people to be ready to pack, or be ready. He said, get packed. So in short time, the Hebrews were on the road. They had all their belongings. They had their families and their flocks and their herds. And they even had Egyptian gold with them. And God was leading his people toward the promised land. But because they had all this stuff that had been sent with them, it was taking them a little bit of time to get going. They weren't very fast in their travel. It wasn't like they just jumped in their car and took off. They had to walk the whole way or ride their donkeys and camels. They had their families, and some had little kids, and, and so it was hard. It wasn't an easy trip for them. To show them the way, God decided that he would send them a pillar of cloud, and a cloud that went before them during the day was just smoke in the air. And at night, he sent a pillar of fire. Can you imagine that? It made their camp look like light during the day. Can you imagine? And we've all sat around a campfire, but you guys, this was like a pillar. It was huge, and it made their whole camp look like day. How awesome would that have been to see? What a comfort to be able to look up and know that God was right there taking great care of you. The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire let everyone know that God's presence was right there with them and he was never leaving them. When Pharaoh realized what he had done, it says in the Bible that he was upset that he had let the Hebrews go because he didn't know who was going to get all of his work done. So the Egyptian army raced across the desert after them and the pillar that led the Hebrews, the cloud and the fire, went to the, brought them to the edge of the Red Sea. They were camped there when someone noticed the cloud of dust in horizon. They said, oh no, it's Pharaoh and his chariots. Somebody yelled, we got to get out of here. They began to wonder if God was going to leave them there to die. They couldn't go forward because the sea was there. They couldn't go back. Because Pharaoh was there, and he was coming with his chariots and with his army. And on each side of them was a mountain. They were trapped, and they were terrified. Can you imagine how scared they must have been? But then Moses speaks up, and he says, don't be afraid. He says, stand firm, because you're going to see the Lord deliver you today. And as the Egyptian army drew closer and closer the pillar of cloud did something amazing, you guys. So fun to read this story in the Bible. That pillar of cloud came to rest over it, went over the top of them, and it came to rest between them and the Egyptian army. On one side of the cloud, where the Egyptian army was at, it brought darkness. And on the other side, it gave light. It gave light to the Hebrews. The cloud was keeping the people safe all night. Most of us know the rest of the story, that even though there was nothing but the Red Sea in front of them, 
The Israelites obeyed God and they headed for the water. And Moses raised his staff and stretched his hand over the sea and the waters parted and they began to walk across the land on dry ground. All night, the pillar of fire provided light as the Hebrews walked through the Red Sea. Water on one side and water on the other. The Egyptians followed, but as soon as the last of the Israelites was safely on the other side, the Lord told Moses, stretch your hand back over the sea so the waters will flow back together. And that's what happened. Again, Moses obeyed, and the entire Egyptian army was drowned in the Red Sea that day. Just like the Hebrew children, we need guidance sometimes. We might think, I got this, I'm a good person. But we need the Holy Spirit, and we need God's word in our lives to live the life that God has planned for us. Let me show you what I mean. So I just have this ordinary balloon right here. And like most people, it represents trying to go through their life on your own. Most people want to do the right thing. Most people want to go the direction they're supposed to go. But let's see how well this balloon does. I have a target back over here, and I'm going to see if I can hit that target with this balloon. Ready? Let's see. I don't think it worked. I don't even think it came close. Did you see that? It just kind of fizzed out. But you know what the balloon needs? Like we need in our lives, the balloon needs some guidance. And I happen to have a string here. And the string will point its way to the target. What happens when we blow up the balloon now? Get it on its guidance system. Let's see if the balloon can hit the target now. Look at that. Straight to it. Straight to it. It hit the target. That's just awesome, you guys. That's what we need in our lives. We sometimes set out and we want to do the right things, but we need direction and we need guidance. Just like the balloon, I blew it up and tried to get it to hit the target, but it needed guidance. It needed something to be able to make and hit the target. I knew what direction I wanted that balloon to go, but I still couldn't get it there. I could have stood here all day blowing that balloon up and letting it go and hoping that it would hit that target. But until I gave it some direction, until I gave it some guidance, until I attached it to the string, it wasn't going to happen. It's the same way with us, you guys. We stay on target in our journey through life if we let the Bible and the Holy Spirit guide us. God can use anything he wants to guide us. Anything he wants. Just like with the Hebrew children. He used a cloud of smoke and a, a cloud of fire. It can be as miraculous as that if God chooses. But the way that God most usually leads us today is through his word and through his Holy Spirit. I dare you, open up God's word. There's amazing stories, just like the one I read to you today. Look for him. Look for the Holy Spirit's guidance in your life. As you read through the Bible, listen for the still, small voice of God. He also speaks through our, to our spirit through prayer. So make sure that you're praying. And that's not a difficult thing, guys. We know that praying is simply talking to God. But remember, always, part of talking and part of having communication with God is opening our ears and listening, listening to what he has to say. So spend time with God every day. 
Read his word. Spend time in prayer. Let him guide you so that you can hit the target every time. If you follow him, he will lead you, just like he did the Hebrew children, through tough, horrible, scary situations. If you follow him, he will lead you, and you can trust his plans even when things look a little scary. Let's pray. Lord God, I am so grateful that you're there for us, knowing the directions that we need to take. I pray, Lord, today that you would allow your Holy Spirit to remind us, spend time with you. Lord, you're amazing and we love you. And we need your guidance in our lives every day. Lord, guide us and direct us, I pray. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.